Abel's faith led him to give. Noah's faith led him to prepare. Enoch's faith led him to walk with God. Abraham's faith led him to obey God. And Moses' faith was a faith that allowed him to choose what was best for his life. Because we cannot do it alone, nor should we. Welcome to our devotional, Mana, where we listen to and obey the Lord's word. In the same way, today, this Friday, this Friday of prayer in Mana, a day to raise our hands, to bend our knees, to incline our hearts, and to humble ourselves before God's presence, I invite you to choose today. One day the Lord went to the home of Martha and Maria. And when Mary saw the Lord Jesus, she sat at his feet, but Martha became occupied with many things. Martha, Martha, the Lord answered, you are worried and upset about many things, but few things are needed, or indeed only one. Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken away from her. Today we must choose, are we going to do other things, or make up things to do? In our own means, today we must make a decision that we continue doing things in our own efforts, in our human wisdom, or do we give God his place? When we learn to give God his place, we must know that the Lord's invitation is for us to be still in his presence. Psalm 46 says, Be still and know that I am God. The Lord said to the people of Israel, You will work six days, and on the seventh day you will rest. Six years you will toil the land, and on the seventh year you will not toil. And so the question always came up, What shall we do on the seventh day? What shall we do on the seventh year when we do not toil? Or so, but the Lord always said to them that he would give them double that seventh day, that seventh year so that they will lack nothing. When I learn to rest, I am honoring God. God himself rested. And when God rested, it was not because he was tired. Instead, it was to teach us that in God's rest, there is strength, that in God's rest, there is confidence and assurance. Because when I rest, I am telling God that I trust in him. Because the world invites us to be in a hurry. The world invites us to work like crazy. This is why we see many people who work day and night or become slaves to work because we think that if we work a lot, then we will earn a lot and we will reach where we want to go quicker. But that is a lie. Many people and with this attitude end up wasting their lives, their time, their families, sacrificing their rest, their peace, and at the end, lose it all. The Lord this morning invites us. He is telling us, look, no matter how much you are in a hurry, a single measure, or no matter how much we worry, can we add a single hour to our lives? No matter how much we worry, the sun will not rise any earlier, nor are things going to be more affected. There are moments when the Lord wants us to learn to rest. And why? Because our body needs rest. Because our mind needs a change of activity. Because our lives need family. We need free time. The invitation this morning while we pray is to not consider ourselves more than God. Or we should not believe that if we can do more things, then we will achieve things quicker. Our Lord invites us to kneel today. There are many things that we can do today. But kneel. There are many things to think about today, but close the door to pray. There are many matters to handle, but these matters will have to wait because this time with God is not to be exchanged for anything because this is my time, my time of spiritual refreshment, my time of renewal, my time of peace. During this time that I am in God's presence, I receive God's peace that surpasses all understanding and the world cannot give me this peace. Money cannot give me this peace. Not even my loved ones who love me so much can give me this peace. And so this is the only place in God's presence where I can receive what only God can give me. Why should I waste this time? Right now you're in God's home. You are in God's presence. 
And in this place, you receive the joy that the world, that riches, that possessions cannot give you. Because no one can take away the joy that comes from God. And this is what her heart needs. God's peace surpasses all understanding. Even the most peaceful, the most tranquil, the most beautiful place cannot give me the peace that only comes from God. Because God's peace is supernatural. And in the same way, the love that I can find in God, in His presence, no one or nothing can give. Welcome. Welcome to God's presence. Welcome to God's home. Here, in this place of His presence, you will find all that you need abundantly. He opens His arms and gives you all that you need, and you will find it unconditionally, specifically for you, for all of those who approach Him. Those who are too occupied do not come to this place. Those who are desperate, worried, or too busy cannot reach this place because in their minds they believe that this act of being in God's presence is a waste of time or religiosity or fanatism. Lord, it makes me sad to know that many do not understand what it means to be in your home. Lord, it makes me sad to know that many of your children do not know what it means to come to your presence, to be in your presence. But here we are, this Friday morning, hundreds and thousands of listeners of Mana are here together in the home of our good God. We come before He who morning after morning brings us nourishment, who brings us Mana, who brings us sustainment. And we are here to say, Lord, here we are and we do not want to miss out on this time, on this space. Lord, because we know that this is the most important time of each day. The first minutes of our day where we kneel, where we close the door, when we bend our knees to simply say, Lord, we rest on you. We believe in you. We await on you because those of us who kneel, we know that what God does not do, no one else can do. If God does not open the door, no one else can open that door. The door that God closes, absolutely no one can open. It is that simple. Glory to God. Glory to God for the privilege, for the gift that He gives us this morning. The gift of being in His home, in His atriums, on His altar, to be in His presence. I invite you right where you are this morning. Be satisfied. Be satisfied with the abundance in God's home. The fullness, the plentitude that is here in this place of His presence. Be filled with God's joy. Be filled with God's love. Be filled with God's peace. Allow your entire heart to be filled, flooded with Him, with His plentitude. Because when you allow yourself to be flooded with this, no one or anything can separate you from this love. Nothing or no one can take away from you what He has given you. Glory to God. Lord, fill each heart, each life of those who are approaching you this morning. You know the hearts of each person. And I would like for you to take the heart of anyone who is anguished, worried, concerned, or anxious. Touch their heart and remove this pressure. Remove the thought from their mind that if they do not do something, then nothing's going to happen. Speak to their heart, Lord, and tell them that you are in control. Tell them that you have the final word over everything. Tell each one of your children this morning, welcome to my home. Welcome to the place of my presence. Welcome to the place where tears become streams. Welcome to the place where sadness becomes joy, where tears are turned into dance. Blessed are those who come to this place because those who come sad, burdened, tired, wounded, or with a broken heart, they leave joyful, filled, satisfied, fulfilled here in this place. In the place of His presence, everything is obtained by pure grace. Here, nothing is sold. Nothing is deserved. Everything here is received by pure grace of His love. With His open arms, by His extended hand, He calls us His children, and He has the best for us. Father, 
I ask this morning that you forgive us, that you forgive us for not understanding, that you forgive us for believing that we can do more than you, that we can think more than you, that we can be wiser than you. Forgive us because this is when we rush to do things. This is the message that we are giving. But those of us who kneel, those of us who pray, those of us who remain in his presence, we are saying to God, Lord, here we are. Without you, we are nothing. Without you, we can do nothing. Only by your hand can things come to be. Lord, you know our lives. You know our family members, our loved ones. Lord, you know my spouse. You know my children. You know my financial condition, my emotional condition, my physical condition. There is nothing unknown to you. And this is why I come to this place of your presence to turn them over to you. Lord, work in them, work in their lives, in their hearts to produce a change because I cannot change anyone. But what can happen in this place of your presence is that you can change me. Say to God this morning, do not change my husband or my children. Instead, change me. Perform a miracle in me. I'm not asking for a miracle in my church. Perform a miracle in me as a member of the church. Ask God to work in you because you are who needs something to happen. No one else, and I know that you are going to act supernaturally in my life. If your heart has lost faith and you do not believe, if you have become skeptic and no longer live by faith, tell the Lord this morning, say, Lord, I do not want to miss out on this life of adventure and purpose this life of faith. I want to learn to believe, to get up each morning knowing that everything is by faith. Nothing is by sight, and even if my eyes do not see things, I believe, I believe in the God of the Bible. I believe in the Almighty God. I believe in He who moves through all the ages, whose arm has not been severed. He continues to be the same yesterday, today, and for eternity, and He will perform miracles in my life. Declare your life this morning a miracle. Declare your job this morning a miracle. Declare your businesses, your sales a miracle. Glory to God because this is what it's about. We as God's children are to live this way, seeing miracles. Because we do not deserve anything. Nothing is ours. Everything is His. And only what He wants to happen will happen. Lord, we are not here to impose our prayers or to tell you what you have to do. Of course not, because this is not what true prayer is about. True prayer rests upon you. May only your will be done. Do I expose my goals? Do I expose my plans? Yes. And I open my heart to tell you what I feel, what I want. But you have the final answer because we only want to do your will. To live for your glory and for your eternal purposes. Lord, I give you each listener of mana. I give you their lives, their hearts, their health. I give you the most vital needs of each one of them. You know them all because you are father to them all. May God bless them wherever they are. May God embrace their lives, their families, filling them with joy, with peace, with strength. May the Lord accompany them today and always. And that every day when they awake, they have the conviction that the Lord is their shepherd and that he will lead them to the best fields, to the best streams. He will anoint their heads with oils, filling them with his plentitude, with his strength and with his presence. Father, thank you for all of those who had birthdays this week. Embrace them. Tell them that they are a miracle. Tell them that you called them, that you chose them, that you wrote their name in the book of life before the foundation of the world, and that each day you will lead them from glory to glory. Bless them, protect them, sustain them, along with their families. Lord, thank you for mana, for this nourishment that you bring into our lives each day. Bless the pastors, bless the space, bless this channel. Lord, you know that we need the resources, but in the same way, I know that all the resources are yours. And you are who gives us, who sustains us, who provides for us. If we have come this far, it is because you have brought us here. It is you who touches the hearts of people. It is you who orders them, who places in them the fervent desire to give and to commit to the work. 
Thank you for caring for us. We commend ourselves to you. We ask for your blessing. And may your grace always be in the middle of our lives. May God bless you and guard you. And may his presence accompany you always in Christ Jesus. And be very attentive because next week we will be talking about the women of faith. So I wait for you next week in our devotional time. Blessings to all.